Anger is never neutral. We're going to stick in the cabbage. Anger is never neutral. Did you know that? Stop. Hey, let me show you something. First, a healthy anger. I mean, there's only one healthy anger. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to say, y'all guess whether it's healthy or unhealthy, but you ain't got to guess. I'm going to tell you. There's only going to be one healthy one. One. And that's when I challenge the injustice that I see. I challenge the problem that's coming. I challenge it in a healthy way. I'm angry, but I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to go, I don't, want, I don't like abortion, but I'm not going to go to an abortion clinic and blow it up. I, know, uh, uh, I, I don't like some of the, some of the uh, things I see people do to other people, but I'm not going to go stab them or go kill them. I'm going to go take care of business. I'm going to help them. But you got to understand that this is, this is, is you got to understand, basic confrontation can be done in a godly way. And most of the time it can be done without spilling blood. Amen? So first, there's the challenge. Now that's healthy. But then it begins to compound because you haven't done anything about it. And so when it begins to compound and you haven't done anything, you haven't challenged. Remember, there's the challenge. You haven't done the challenge. You haven't gone to the person and said something to them. And the person begins to see it. The person will say, what have I done? And here's your answer. Nothing! If somebody answers me that way, you just will go ahead and tell me there's something wrong. The compounds. And it'll compound and compound until you explode. Now, to explode, I can tell you it's not going to be a pretty sight. But not only is it not going to be a pretty sight, what's going to happen is somebody is going to get the explosion on them that didn't deserve it. Because you actually weren't mad at them, you were mad at somebody else. But you kept holding it and holding it and holding it. Now, I've seen a lot of people do this, but I'm going to tell you, a lot of times what I've really noticed is this, collapse. By collapse, I'm talking about implode. A lot of times if somebody, listen, a lot of times, not always, but there are times if somebody is depressed, a lot of times the depression comes because they are angry and they're imploding. And by imploding means instead of me destroying you, I'm destroying me. You might not even be aware of it. It might not even be a thought in your mind. But actually because you're part of the depression, and even part of the bad habits that you do, is because you're angry and you've imploded. It's on the inside. So instead of, instead of challenging, and instead of blowing up, because you don't want that ugly blow up, you collapse. And again, a lot of caregivers collapse. Collapse. They implode. Because they don't want to say anything. They don't want to, to get out of there. But here's what I'm talking about kicking the cat. It's contagious. If you're angry, and you stay angry at your work, you stay angry at your house, you stay angry around your friends, what's going to happen is it begins to rub off on them. As it begins to rub off on them, you'll begin to sit. Because not only is it contagious, contaminates. It ruins the environment. You have a nasty environment. It changes the atmosphere. You know, I remember working at Fountain. And I remember working uh, in engineering. And I remember before, that, before I was the manager of engineering in the department, I remember the person that was doing that was a very angry person. And that person was eating people up. And I come in sometimes, I hear that person eating everybody else up. And I'm thinking to myself, why are you doing this? But it wasn't my department, so I didn't do anything about it other than just saying, I'd get to the side and say, you think you can chill out a little bit? And then one day, the manager came to me and said, said look, we got a problem, and I don't know how to handle this problem that everybody's doing here, so here's what I'm going to do. I went and talked to the personnel manager, who was a hothead, and said, they instructed me to cuss everybody out today. The whole engineering department just hold them down and cuss them off. And I said, he says, don't take the personnel. I said, okay. And so we were going up to that meeting. I said, I want everybody in the engineering department to be here at 2 o'clock in this office. I mean, don't make any excuses to be here at 2 o'clock. So about 10 minutes to 2, we were going. I had to walk into the manager on purpose. I went to walk to the manager. As we're walking up the stairs. We're walking up the stairs, and he says, Take it personal. And I handed him a piece of 
piece of paper. And when I handed him the piece of paper, I just walked over and sat down. A few minutes later, everybody come in. And he said, I'm glad everybody's here. How's everybody doing? He said, I just want you to know we got a problem, but we can fix it. He said, let's talk it out. What's the problem? And everybody started talking. He said, good, because we can fix this. It's going to be fine. And he started talking about, David, how can we do this? And how can we do that? I said, here's how we can do it. When we got through, I walked over around him and I said, I thought you were going to cuss everybody out. I thought you were going to let us have it. He said, I was. So you gave me that paper. On that paper, I wrote, it can take years to gain somebody's confidence in a matter of seconds to lose it. He said, I read your paper. He said, can I ask you a question? This is my manager. I said, yes. He said, how did I do? <laughs> I said, I'm proud of it. You see, Anger negative. Here, here's a negative for anger. And, and I, I won't have keep much longer. In fact, I'm going to throw somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Psalm 37 8. It says, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. And I went ahead and wrote uh, the Holman Christian Standard version down here. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. It can only bring harm. It brings harm to you and it brings harm to others. And so when you lose it, and I'm guilty too, and I'm not up here talking to little, little look, don't come pin wings on me. I, ain't got, I got a halo, but that halo is resting on a couple of horns, okay? <laughs> In fact, most of the time my halo is hanging on one or the other. We're all people. We're all human. Every last one of us. And you can complain about somebody else being mad, and I can sit there and give you 10 minutes, you'll be doing the same thing one like day. You were complaining about them. You know, I, I did talk to somebody not long ago, and I told them, I said, uh, I, I, I instructed them to go find a person <clears throat> on their job. I said, you can find this person. I said, if you want to know how to act, see them. And the person looked at me and got grilled big eyes and said, tell me about it. He said, I was mean to that person. And got mean and meaner. He kept smiling. He said, one day I went to him and said, Aren't you going to get mad? He said, I know. He said, So he got even meaner and madder. And the guy looked at him and said, I know what you need. And he walked over to him and he gave him a great big You see, people are watching. They're seeing how you handle things. They're watching this because, let me tell you something. The harm's going to be to you, to them, to reputations, to, remember, it can take you years to gain that reputation, seconds to lose it. And so, watch this. Now, here we go. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something out here, and then we're getting ready, we're getting ready, we're getting ready to quit. Not quit, we're going to stop. <laughs> okay, ready? Here we go. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. In other words, let me just do the message. Anger people stir up a lot of discord. Then temper stir up trouble. Again, a one angry person in a group of people can change the whole temperament of the whole atmosphere. One person can change the whole temperament of a church service. One person can change the whole temperament in a family. One person. And it doesn't have to be a constant thing. Just that one time losing it and staying for a while camped out there can cause a problem. So watch this, watch this. Here, here, here's, here's what happens. Here's what happens when somebody that's talking about causes trouble, stirs up trouble, that causes discord. Uh, here, watch this. First, you get a loss of uh, confidence. You see, you start feeling insecure about your relationship with that person. You begin losing your insecurity or you get insecure about your relationship with God, your ability to respond wisely to difficulties. So first, your confidence. Get shaken. When all this stuff happens, if somebody comes in and blares you out, your confidence and or trust get shaken. And then the energy. You start lacking strength for your service to God and service to others. This is what's happening to you and others at the same time. Faith. Now, failing to believe that God is working in your life. And freedom. Becoming a prisoner of your emotions. And you're unable 
to able to serve God freely. Identity. You become, you're becoming like the person toward whom you were bitter rather than becoming like Christ. And everybody else is becoming like that person too. I remember that fountain. I tell the guys every morning we go to work. I when we went to work, I sit down and we would do a spiritual leadership lesson. If it was only for two minutes. And I tell everybody, when you go out, I'm here to tell you, we're not about going out and, and, and making people angry. We're about going out and winning them over because we have to work with these people. And our job, our job is to help these people do their job. So whatever you do, don't go out there like you John Wayne and Billy Bad. You go out there and you remember you're doing them a service. Because at the fountain, when I first went to the fountain, people didn't trust the engineers because people were stealing their ideas and claiming them and all this. And so, 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 so I, I would show them. They give me an idea, and I would show the engineer change request, and I would show it to them. Their name. This is their idea. And people started giving ideas all over the place. Plus, if you get an idea and it, it worked, they, they'd get a fresh, crisp $100 bill. They'd get their picture up on the board. It went from everybody holding their ideas in. Everybody was giving ideas. You see, again. And, then, and look, uh, perspective. Allowing your emotions to distort your thinking. Do you know your emotions? The Bible says that the heart is deceitful. In Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful. Your emotions are deceitful. You can follow them things if you want to. I can tell you one thing, following your emotions can bring a whole lot of trouble and bring it back because emotions are like this. God's word is like this and emotions are like this. you got a choice. How are you going to live your life? Like this or like this? Amen? And then, uh, sensitivity. You can't even hear the spirit talk because everybody's so bad and so mean going on. And vision, you lose sense of God's purpose for your own life. You know, uh, uh, I, I was going to tell you about this guy. I can't even pronounce his name. But I think I pronounced it right. And if y'all know who I'm talking about, please don't anybody blurt it out. Do not blurt this out. Arenthal James. 